hello what is happening as you can see we are unfortunately back in the hospital we made the decision to switch marsley over from a g tube to a g j tube this could be what makes the difference between us having to be in the hospital all the time and us being able to have weeks on and months on end at home together Hello, what is happening? <laughs> it has been a few days, almost a week actually, since I recorded or posted any videos or content. I've been posting to my stories, but I just had several days where I felt like all I was seeing was just really toxic stuff. So I decided that I needed a break. As you can see, we are unfortunately back in the hospital. We got back in the hospital on Wednesday after what should have been a very routine <laughs> appointment so we went in for just a checkup with one of marcelie's specialists and she was fine when she woke up on wednesday morning but when we got to the specialist's office i noticed that she was obviously irritable we went through our normal stuff at that specialist office and once her specialist came in i said i really think she might have a fever he agreed that she did not look like herself at all so he sent us straight over to the er we got to the er and she immediately started having some really bad seizures so we they stuck us in a trauma room started doing a whole workup on her and she quickly started showing more signs of respiratory distress and had to be put on a pretty significant amount of oxygen so i was at this point convinced that she had pneumonia again because she had thrown up the night before but when they did her x-ray her x-ray didn't come back that bad her doctors kind of said you know i don't really think it's pneumonia right now they had done also a full viral panel they had done Whole bunch of tests to see you know is this a bacterial infection of some kind is this a viral infection of some kind and literally everything that they tested came back negative but i was still convinced wednesday night after we got from the er to the picu i was still convinced even after all the testing that they had done that she had pneumonia i knew it i knew it in my gut that she had pneumonia we spent the night up in the picu and she got a lot of rest which was great and they got pretty good control of her seizures. They put her on an antibiotic just to be safe, which I was grateful for. The next day, the ICU doctor came by and I told him, you know, I just still felt like something, we were missing something, that something was wrong. She was still on a significant amount of oxygen at that point and her respiratory therapist tried to wean her and they tried to wean her too aggressively. She did not tolerate it at all. So I told the ICU doctor that I thought we were missing something. So he agreed with me that we needed to do a follow-up x-ray the next day. Friday rolls around and they do the follow-up chest x-ray and sure enough, she has pneumonia, just like I said. <laughs> so they started her on a different antibiotic and we started talking about the implications of her having pneumonia not once but twice in the last uh, less than two months and kind of some next steps that we needed to consider. So pneumonia and other respiratory illnesses are big issues with people with lysencephaly. Lysencephaly can make it very difficult for the respiratory muscles to work effectively. They're oftentimes not as strong and especially with the amount of seizure medications that she is on it makes it even harder for her to breathe very effectively it's also very difficult for her to clear secretions effectively so she is at risk you know even on her best day for getting sick even more so than a typical person would be because of encephaly and you add on top of that the fact that she was still recovering from her first bout of pneumonia when she got the second bout of pneumonia so why is she getting pneumonia so frequently a lot of people with encephaly have difficulties with feeding 
which is why she was on an NG tube when she was first born and why she got put on a G tube back in April. She's done very, very well with the G tube overall. However, once we switched her over to the keto diet, she started having a harder time with her G tube feeds. It was almost like her stomach just couldn't handle the the G tube feeds the way that they were before. Now that could also be because she was still recovering from pneumonia because right around the time we started the keto diet, she got pneumonia. So we don't really know if there's one reason or multiple reasons why she's not tolerating her G tube feeds as well as she was before. We just know that she's not tolerating them. So with her increased risk of aspiration because she already has Liz encephaly and because her lungs are just not getting the rest that they need at this point, we made the decision to switch Marsley over from a G tube to a G J tube. So feeding tubes are named based on their placement. When she had an NG tube when she was first born, NG stands for nasogastric tube. So that was a tube that went through her nose and ended down in her stomach. When she had the G tube placed, that tube was a tube that went directly into the stomach. So there's like a little hole in the skin and the tube fits right in there and all of her feeds go directly through that tube into the stomach. Now she's going to have what's called a GJ tube, which will give us the option, it'll have two openings. We'll have the option to feed her uh, either through the G tube or through a separate portion called the J part of the tube, which goes directly into the small intestine. She will not have to have surgery for this, which is a huge relief for us. It's literally just a switching of the tube type and she will just have to do this under imaging so that they can make sure they get it in the right place. But here's where things get kind of interesting and difficult when it comes to medical parenthood and the decisions that you have to make on a daily basis. Marsali was tolerating her G2 feeds well overall prior to us starting keto, but we started keto because we wanted to see if we could get some improved seizure control because seizure control will help prevent her from aspirating. When you have increased seizures, your risk for aspiration increases. Our hope was with starting keto that we could get some better seizure control and we were slowly seeing an improvement with that. We knew that even if we switched back to a regular formula, we would be risking her having increased seizures again, which would still be increasing her risk for developing pneumonia. It's like, okay, well, if we're going to stay on this keto diet and she is already having to do feeds at a much slower rate than she was beforehand and she's still having issues with vomiting and we're still developing issues with pneumonia, then we need to consider what is going to help save her lungs and give her lungs the time and rest that they need to recuperate. Aspiration causes a significant amount of inflammation in the respiratory system. So by switching her to a GJ tube, we give ourselves the flexibility to give her her formula feeds through the J part of the tube at a much slower rate, bypass the stomach. And if she ends up vomiting, the only thing that she would vomit is a limited amount of fluid. She wouldn't be vomiting up that much formula and placing herself at risk for aspirating that formula and developing further cases of pneumonia. Here's the deal. A lot of medical moms who share this kind of stuff on social media get a lot of flack for sharing what they share. And I have to ask myself a lot, you know, why, why am I sharing this information? What do I choose not to share with a wide audience? There are always going to be some parts of our journey that I choose not to share because I don't find them necessary to share for educational purposes. But here's why I chose to share this story today. Number one, I want parents to start appreciating their gut. A lot of times it can be really tempting to forget that we know our children best. And although doctors know a lot, they don't know our children the way that we do. I really don't know that we would have gotten the follow-up x-ray and that we would have gotten her on the right antibiotics as quickly as we did and that she would be recovering as quickly as she is if I had not pushed for 
that second x-ray on day two so trust your gut number two despite the fact that i was a pediatric physical therapist prior to being my daughter's full-time caregiver there was a lot that i still didn't know i've learned so much just on the fly and it's been overwhelming for me even with my medical background trying to understand all of these different procedures and all these different tests and all of these different medical interventions so i hope that in sharing some of our story this can be educational and people can learn things in a way that makes sense to them it is really hard to advocate for your child when you are not having information about your child presented to you in a way that you can understand lastly i just kind of want to be real about the journey of medical parenthood i will be so honest this decision to switch from a g tube to a j tube was a little bit difficult for me when marcelie was born i was very hopeful that i would be able to breastfeed her and then that didn't happen then when we started feeding therapy i was hopeful that we would eventually be able to tolerate some milk by mouth and then that didn't happen so we made the decision to go from an ng tube to a g tube which was a great decision but then you know within less than six months we were having doctors present us with the option of switching from a g-tube to a gj tube and for whatever reason i felt like that meant that we were going backwards when you're on g-tube feeds you can do what's called bolus feeding and basically that means that you're doing like shorter feeds over the course of the day so you know we had spent this time like getting her to tolerate g-tube feeds and she was tolerating them pretty well and it was fitting our lifestyle pretty well in the sense that we had times that she was on a feed so she's you know attached to a cord and a feeding pump and times where she was not we could kind of work our schedule around that and now we were you know sitting here talking about having to have her on continuous 24-hour feeds and over time we can compress that that time span to where she's only on a feed for 18 to 20 hours a day and we can kind of spread that out to be more at night and have more flexibility during the day but it just for a moment felt like we were taking a step backwards every time when we were on g2 feeds and we were able to increase her rate and get her those feeds and she was tolerating them it felt like we were moving forward it felt like we were making progress in the world of medical parenthood, you take those inch stones and you just, you cherish them so deeply that sometimes when you end up having to pivot and go a different route where the inch stones are a little bit harder to identify or they take longer to accomplish, it can feel really defeating. Now, I talk a lot about ableism on this page and here's a perfect example of a time in which I have to check my own ableism. In making this decision to switch her from a G-tube to a GJ tube and wrestling with those feelings, I had to ask myself, why is it that I am wrestling with this? Why is it that I'm feeling that this is a step backwards? And I realized that if I was honest with myself, the reason that I was struggling with this so much was because I felt like when we were on the G-tube and we were progressing with our bolus feeds, that we had some sense of normal in my head that was pretty close to you know what our own feeding schedule looked like so it made it easier for us to schedule things as a family it was really challenging for me to reach this level of honesty with myself where i said this decision is not about me this decision is about her deciding to switch from a g-tube to a gj tube is not a step backwards it is a step forward because what is normal is not what measures somebody's quality of life what is normal by an able-bodied person's standard is not the measure of somebody's quality of life who lives life differently for marcely switching to a different kind of feeding schedule is life-saving for her. Marcely didn't deserve to have my feelings about what was going to seemingly be most convenient playing a role in what was going to be best for her quality of life. That was a hard conversation with myself, but it was a most necessary one. So to all of my fellow parents that are struggling with this, I just want you to know that you know, quality of life is subjective. 
having this GJ tube, although it might feel briefly like a step back, is actually a huge step forward for Marsley. I have to remind myself that this could be what makes the difference between us having to be in the hospital all the time and us being able to have weeks on and months on end at home together. This could be what gives her lungs the time they need to heal. Steps forward and steps backward are really just defined by our perspective. So I hope this was helpful to you in some way and I appreciate you guys being here. We are hopeful for small steps forward.